Hi there guys, an update to my previous video with the where I was printing the Mini He-Man and after printing the Mini Skeletor with the cold bed um, I said uh, when I get an opportunity that I would print something with a larger footprint to check the whole warpage situation and as it happens I uh, there's a model that I'd, I'd sort of put by which is of a motorbike, the motorbike in question being a Royal Enfield Bullet which I'm printing to a 1 12th ish scale to go with my other kits that I've built and, um, and I thought I'm going to go ahead and try that with the cold bed settings and I did try initially this, this is the, the right hand side of it basically I've sliced it down the middle because this particular uh, STL was sliced or was created with resin printers, uh, SLA printers in mind um, and isn't really ideal for FDM but um, because I've had a, an Enfield bullet and I really quite fancied one for, uh, for my model collection for a while but you can't buy one in 112th, the nearest I've seen is a 124th scale die casting and, and to be honest they're a bit crappy and um, you know there's, there's bits that never look right on them so I, I much prefer a kit that you build anyway so so this one which I found online somewhere uh, I forget where offhand um, but um, I found this one sliced it essentially sliced it down the middle what I did is I just sank it through the bed in, in uh, Cura till it was halfway down and I've sliced this with the same sort of settings as before nozzle initial temperature at uh, 210 um, and then down to 200 I uh, this is the second attempt the first one there was doing well apart from the supports in the rear wheel and a little bit in the front wheel and the reason that they didn't stick particularly well is because they are actually the second layer so it printed the entire first layer and then the second layer so that meant there was a tiny tiny gap which made it harder for those supports to uh, to stick and I guess that's just part of the downside of how I sliced it in half in Cura I'm, I'm guessing I've never actually done that with a model before so I'm, I'm guessing that that's the reason why that occurred um, because all of the support sections printed as a second layer rather than a first layer so what I, uh, I did to try and help that is I actually set it back to the original setting with the fan off for the first layer allowed it to print, actually physically pulled the cooling fan off and allowed it to print all of the supports for the second layer because this is the bullseye with the fitting, uh, with the uh, friction fitting uh, allowed it to print all of the supports or as, met, as much of the supports as possible for the second layer and then slotted the cooling fan back in so we've got cooling from the second layer upwards of the actual model itself as you can see this is a few layers in and it's starting to print the infill so it's probably something like eight, eight, nine layers in, I think, so far. And so far, as you can hopefully see, it's looking pretty good with regards to um, not lifting. And it's stuck down quite nice and evenly on the bed. I did try and print both halves of the model initially. Uh, but that didn't go too well. I had a couple of attempts at that, and, and to be honest, it, it pretty much it was a bit close to the edges, um, and it took up a lot of space. So I thought, uh, rather than be silly, I'll, I'll just do one half at a time. But just going to the screen, you can see there that we've got ambient temperature, which is around 17 degrees. This was around 15-ish, um, maybe even a little bit lower when I first started printing. But we're around 17 degrees ambient non-heated bed as you can see 200 degrees which is uh, 210 for the first layer 200 afterwards uh, 30 millimeters per second and it's 3d qf pla filament so um 
so far so good I shall update once we're um, a good few more layers in and see how that's going a little update on um, the bullet 3d print uh, so far adhesions looking good there's no obvious sign of um, warpage or lifting on the front or the back um, I suppose this is a, you could argue that this is not the ideal print to test it because it's not one large flat surface such as a box might be so uh, I might have to do that um, at some point as well just to test it but so far it's looking pretty good I'm quite impressed with that um, I'm actually quite impressed with how this is going generally because this is quite a complex um, collection of shapes for the printer to print and we are just over six hours in I had a, a moment of, uh, of mad panic thinking I'd really truly messed this up because um, because I'm an idiot and at one point decided to try and um, you know, try and get a, a lump of goo on, off the nozzle or something I tried to do something that I really shouldn't have done anyway and in the process of doing it I, um, I caught the bed and stopped it moving so it kind of uh, skipped a couple of teeth and then it started printing I don't know if you can actually still see it you probably can't see it now but down here on the upper part of the frame if I can get its focus uh, down down here on the upper part of the frame it actually started to print some of this support area um, this support area here so um, yeah I kind of thought oh damn and uh, and I was already sort of four hours in at this point um, I tried to sort of nudge the bed back unsuccessfully and I honestly genuinely thought I'd, I'd guffed it so I hit the stop print and it went to its auto home position and I was just about to cut it off completely lift this off the build plate and start all over again and be really annoyed with myself and then I thought I'll just hit the resume print button and see what happens and amazingly it went right back to where it should have been and carried on printing so that was a massive massive relief as you can imagine so yeah we're just over six hours in so far it's looking pretty good and hopefully by the morning uh, as it's as we're getting quite late uh, we're uh, getting up towards 11 p.m. now so hopefully uh, tomorrow morning this will be finished and looking okay so update soon and this is the I suppose final reveal if you like and the bike has completed printing we've got some really nice detail it has remained relatively flat it's remained stuck very very well to the build tack surface despite the fact that the bed was not heated and that's the most important thing and it has remained relatively flat but it's lifted a little bit in the middle and what I'm going to do is just have a quick scoot around with the camera so just to show you what I mean there we've basically got a bit of lift there and it's it's barely barely there at all on the other side nowhere near as bad but it's not peeled up and lifted at the edges which is interesting and it's certainly not as bad as the lifting that I've had before but I think what I need to do uh, for further tests is to print something with a very sort of wide surface like a box of some description or um, you know a large a large flat thing like like this here um, <clears throat> obviously thicker to see if it makes a difference with the edges curling up but so far that's kind of promising looking I think I think it's uh, it's quite interesting to note that uh, that it hasn't lifted like the other prints have and as you can see hopefully it's very very well very firmly stuck and I'm gonna have to be very careful removing this because I've got some incredibly fragile parts on here um, but it's stuck very very well now obviously I used a brim and that I suspect will have helped to some degree 
but brim aside you can actually tell that the parts are stuck very well as well and um, and that's all without cooling now obviously th this is not just ender specific this is applicable to any FDM printer printing with a cold bed and it does show I think that a heated bed with for PLA is certainly not an absolute necessity and anyone that's experiencing lifting with PLA print it's kind of an interesting little um, thing to note that this might help you and I'm going to go ahead and sort of wiggle this round and try and carefully remove this because there are some parts that are very fragile and I want to try and remove this without breaking anything if possible And that's actually taking quite some force to get this under here so you can tell that it has adhered very very well indeed which is great <coughs> to know that you don't need a heated bed for your PLA to stick well and there we go obviously it's going to need some cleanup and obviously it is going to need uh, the other half printing to glow onto that side but I am absolutely delighted with that that is is definitely flat enough to um, to not be a problem compared to some of the other prints that have noticeably lifted on the edges I don't actually have any handy to show with the exception of this box that I printed here and you can see especially in the corners of the drawers how they lifted up and this was on a heated bed and this was when I first started experimenting and you'll notice I managed to get the larger box slightly flatter and it is hard to see but that is still a little bit bowed and lifted at the corners it's usable perfectly usable for what it is but obviously I would have much preferred it to have been completely flat so Hopefully this will be useful for some of you that are experiencing lifting problems and low ambient temperatures and uh, heated bed versus cold bed and so on and what have you. And uh, that's as far as I'm, I'm not going to start removing any of the supports or anything like that just now. I'm going to go ahead and do that and when I can sit down and spend a bit more time doing it. But I'm quite delighted with that print. That's the right hand side of a Royal Enfield Bullet 500 new model. So I uh, hope this has been useful. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.